Hi, I'm Ron, and today I think I'm going to give a quick intro lesson to using SketchUp for carpenters. It's a very powerful program, great for carpenters and home builders to use. It's um, able to design the most uh, complex houses, but at the same time, you can also draw the simplest uh, models of things you may want to build in the, in the wood shop. So recently, I uploaded a video of a... Um, cross-cut sled that I built in the shop. And that sled uh, is a pretty easy model to build, but the concepts that I can show you here uh, to get you started are really the building blocks for much more complex models. A, a very complex detailed model is simply uh, a bunch of simple parts put together. And so if you, if you get started right, I think you'll find that SketchUp is a um, is a you know very very powerful program and that it can start with your simplest prizes can take you all the way through and what's really neat about it is is the the basic version is just a light version and it's free for you to download now I'm using the pro version here and I've been using it since version one so many many years with this and I've I've done a lot of projects with it. Um, but everything I do today, you can do in the um, version called Make, SketchUp Make versus SketchUp Pro. And you'll see up the top here that it is untitled. So the next thing I want to do is save it. And I will save it desktop. And you can see right there you get confirmation. The name has been changed. And again, yours would say uh, SketchUp make here not SketchUp Pro and then I believe uh, this is Sophie here we don't need Sophie so I'm just gonna left click on her and uh, my screen may look a little different than yours because I probably have some custom stuff done so if you come over here into a gray area and you right click and you see custom toolbar you can grab any of these tools and drag them up onto there and and the styles and the standard views which I use quite a bit are right here and you just drag them up and they'll go right onto there and if you don't want them you just drag it off and poof it's gone so I do want that there so I'll drag it up and the other thing you can do is this is a full set of basic tools you can drag and drop those right there as well so I'm gonna click done and uh, probably one other thing that you may not see this tool palette here is a large tool palette and the way you get that is on view tool palettes large so I just checked it off so it's not there so view tool palettes large tool set so that should get you close to your screen looking like mine if you want to follow along or try this yourself now um, what I think I'll do first is I'm going to draw this sled without talking and take note of how long it takes and then I will and I'll speed that up when I edit the video so you can look at that very quickly and then I will go back and draw another one and go through it in detail with you. So starting with uh, that, I'm going to stop talking now and just start drawing. So I'm going to hit the R key for rectangle. That's this tool right here. I'm just going to left click, drag, and left click again. I didn't pay attention to the dimensions or anything like that. I just drew in the, drew in the uh, red green direction. It's a flat plane. It's just four connecting lines creating the flat geometry. And then since it's a closed in um, bit of geometry it automatically fills in with the surface. And if you look down here, I haven't done anything other than click drag click 
I haven't done anything else. If I'd done anything else, I could not change these dimensions. I don't need to click in the, in the dimensions box. I'll just type in 22.5 inches and 26 inches. Now also when you set up SketchUp the very first time, it's going to give you a choice um, of the going to preferences here and show you and workspace or templates. And you notice that I have an architectural design feet and inches. If you use millimeters or meters or any other setup you want, you can, you'll, you'll be forced to make a choice when you first open SketchUp. And then it'll always default to that unless I go in and change it. So if I wanted to go to millimeters, I could. And one other quick thing you might do is uh, make sure that in the Generals tab, you've got Auto Save every five minutes. You get a lot of work done in five minutes, and so it's nice to know that it's automatically saving in the background and, and limiting uh, your losses. The next thing, and this is, the, I'm going to call this the number one tip, the most important thing, the, the thing that gave me the biggest trouble when I started using SketchUp years ago. Right now, this is just geometry. It's just open geometry. I can do anything I want to it on purpose or an accident. So what I'm going to do, after I've drawn the geometry I want, I'm going to double click on it and that will highlight everything. All four lines are highlighted blue and the surfaces, the dots show blue there. I'm going to right click, make a group. Now this is closed in a container. The container is called a group. There's other containers, more advanced stuff called components. Works very similarly. They have different functions, but we'll just stick with groups for right now. So it was just, I just highlighted it, whether I take the selection tool and highlight the whole thing and right click and make a group, um, or whether I double click on it. And you can see now when I double click on it, it's already a group. I get this bounding box that opens. This tells me I've opened this particular piece of geometry and I can edit it. If I have 27 pieces here and they're all in groups, I can carefully just choose the one I want to work on and not accidentally uh, do another. Now, what? I'll, just as a quick aside, I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. Let's say I drew a rectangle. I won't bother with the size. And then I'm drawing and I, I hit the C key for circle and I draw a circle. Well, you can see by the light lines that that geometry is now intersected. If I hit the M key for move, go to move things, it's not going to work. You can see it sort of just stretches and you know this can be very handy for certain things but you don't want this happening when you're trying to draw individual parts and you want them to touch but you don't want them to intersect and if I do the same thing over here with the circle key and I draw on this you can see that the lines remain dark this geometry did not intersect so if I hit the M key and move my rectangle around my plywood base you can see that they they are independent so I'm going to double click there and delete and I'll just use the bounding box here and delete. Now I want to make this a half inch piece of plywood. So I've got to go into that group container to edit this. So I'll double click and then, and that's a left click. And I'm going to click one more time, another left click. And that highlights that surface. Now I'm editing the surface. I'm going to hit the P key for push pull. Every time I hit a key, you'll see it be grayed out over here. This means that's what's selected. I'm going to drag it up doesn't matter how far I drag it up, I just drag it up just like I uh, did with the original geometry. You can see in the corner here it's 2 foot 5 and an eighth. I'm just going to type in 0.5 inches and it draws it a half inch. I can also hit 1 slash 2 inches and it'll draw a half inch as well. So you can enter in the dimensions however you are most comfortable. I work with the uh, point system. It's just a little quicker for me. All right, so now Hit the spacebar key, gives me the selection tool. I'm back out of that group, but I want to edit that group one more time. I need to cut a dado on the bottom of this. And so what I want to do is I know that it's five, it starts five and a half inches in and it's three quarters wide. I'm going to hit the T key for the tape measure tool. You can see it highlighted here. This is not a dimensioning tool. This was that one there. This is uh, to give you guidelines. These guidelines are not part of geometry. They are just guidelines for you to be able to do accurate drawing. So I'm going to just drag it over. Just like before, I just click, left click, left click. And I'm going to type in 5.5 inches, enter. And I know that line is exactly 5.5 over from this edge, which is where I want to start that data. I'm going to do another one real quick, 0.75 inches, enter. And now I want to create a data in here that is a half an inch or a quarter of an inch deep halfway through this plywood. And there's a couple of ways I could do it. I could draw it on this surface and draw it through. 
I think what I'll do is I will come here. That's a double left click. I'm in the group. Left click again highlights the surface I want to edit. I'm going to do the L key for the line tool, which is the pencil tool. It'll automatically snap to the intersection of that guideline. So you don't need to worry about getting off. Again, when you're drawing in 3D, sometimes it's hard to see it. So it's nice to have these guidelines. So I left click once, drag it down to the other side. And you can see it, it will reference right there and show you the intersection. And I know I'm going in the green direction because it's showing me a green line. Left click again. Now I've created, I've split that surface into two surfaces and I can edit them independently. I could go with the push pull tool and I could pull just this side down. I could push that side up. I'm going to command Z, command Z, put those back. I really want to draw another line here because I want to make a dado here. So same thing as before. Click, left click, left click. And now I've created three surfaces. I've broken up this one surface into three. I'm going to push pull tool, the P key push up and I'm going to just type in 0.25 inches enter and I'm going to drop out of that group I'm not going to do any more editing to this it's done but it's safe it's in its little group and so unless I go into that group and see that bounding box I can't edit it or it'll be protected now I've got these guidelines going a lot of times I'll have 10 15 up to 40 of them they, they can get confusing I can go in and Delete one and get rid of it. If it's one in my way, I'll command Z and bring it back. The other thing I can do is just go to edit, delete guide. So if I've got 40 of them, I can get rid of them all at once. Now I want to create this uh, little rail that goes in here. And I built that rail out of half inch plywood, uh, ripped three quarters of an inch wide, dropped in the stato. So it's a quarter inch in, a quarter inch out. Perfect for the table saw that I built this for. So what I'm going to do now is start a new piece of geometry. I'm going to hit the R key for rectangle. Just draw it down so that I've got it in the direction I want it to go there. That was left click, left click. Now I'm going to, if you drop down the bottom, I could type in three quarter by one half, or I could, because three quarter was already the number I want, I can just come over here and highlight this and hit 0.5 inches and it'll give me half an inch. And now what I want to do is double click make group and hit the O key to orbit. This doesn't move the geometry orbit. The O key moves your camera angle. It's not the rotate tool. It's the orbit tool. So I'm going to double click on the left click, click again, see the dots, hit the P key for push pull. I'm going to drag this over. As long as I touch anywhere along this edge, it'll reference right to where I want it to go. And then again, I'm done with that geometry. I click out of it. And now I have two pieces of geometry that are two parts to the model that are independent of each other. If I hit the M key for move, you can see that I can move it. And that's exactly how I'm going to make it in the shop. So Command Z backs me up a step. And now I want to build the bridges. Now the neat thing about uh, this is where uh, you can really help yourself if you're doing picket fence, or rails on a stair, anything that has a bunch of repeating parts. Um, you can draw one accurately and then just copy it. So what I'm going to do is give myself some guidelines again. I'll grab the T key for tape measure and I'll just come over to this edge and I will double click on it. It gives me a line there and double click on this edge gives me a line there and then I want to go up four and a half inches. You can see it wants to go in the green direction or the blue direction. In this case I'm just referencing this line. I'm going up in blue doesn't matter how far up I go, I just click, type in 4.75 inches, enter. And now I'll hit my R key again for a rectangle tool. Just left click. And you can see again, it wants to draw in that direction, but as soon as I reference there, boom, that intersection, left click. And that'll be how I'll cut that piece of wood before I start carving it down. Now I want to make this, uh, the sled is, the base is made out of half inch and the rail is made a half inch, but the bridges are made out of uh, multiple pieces of three-quarter laminated together. But before I draw it out into the three-quarter, I want to carve it out the way it's going to be built. So I'm going to double-click, right-click, make group. Then I'm going to go into that group. In fact, before I go into the group, I'll give myself a couple more guidelines. Guidelines don't have to, they can be put inside the group or out. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to drag down from the edge two inches. And the blade is not centered. So I know instead of being 11 and a quarter, it's going to be, it's a half an inch off. So it'll be 11 inches. So I'll drag that, type in 11 inches. And 
then I know I want to center a six inch, six inches off of that, off the center point. So I am going to go three inches and six inches. Now that center line isn't really doing anything for me. I could leave it or get it out of the way. Uh, one quick note while I'm here with the uh, tape measure tool. If I click here and drag and I wanted to find center, I don't need to type it in. All I have to do is find this edge here and it'll snap to the midpoint. You can see that turns into the square turns into a circle. So the midpoint's 11 and a quarter and I'm actually at 11 for my center point. All right, so now what I want to do is uh, I want to cut out this section and this section, but I want to make it a little smoother, so I'm going to put a radius in here. So a couple more guidelines will help me with that. So tape measure tool, I'm going to come up an inch. I'm going to use a two-inch hole saw. So, and I typed in, should be one inch. So we'll come up here, do it one more time, and Command-Z, Command-Z when you make a mistake. Click, one inch. That's the center point for a two inch hole saw, one inch. And you can see once you've entered a dimension, if you watch it, the next time you draw out a guideline, it'll want to snap to that same dimension. So it saves a little time, that reference. And now I want to go into this group. So double click, click on that surface again. So that's double click left and then a single click left. And, that get, and that'll highlight that surface. It's important that surface is highlighted. Otherwise, you're not editing it. You'll be drawing on top of it. So I want to hit the C key for circle, and just like I'm drilling a hole, I'm going to find that, that center point. It locks right on the intersection, and just draw it down until it touches that edge, just like I'd cut it in the shop. Same thing here. I could draw it down there, or I could draw it out there. It doesn't really matter. I could enter in one inch. Now I want to finish the cut, like I do with the, with the jigsaw. So I'll hit the L key for the line tool. It gives you a pencil, and I'll just right where it intersects. Draw down and intersects with that radius, intersects with the radius there, and the same thing on the other side. And if you're having a tough time seeing things, you hit the O key and you orbit, it doesn't, um, doesn't uh, change the geometry, all it does is move your perspective. So now I have the lines drawn, I want to erase all of that. So I am going to hit the spacebar key, gives my selection tool, I'm going to drag left to right and just highlight the stuff I want to get rid of and hit delete. Now the reason I drug left to right, if I go right to left, that will only select every, the geometry that is completely encompassed in the box. So if I come to here, nothing is selected because I didn't have anything completely in the box. If I come over here like this, you see that blue line is highlighted. But if I go left to right, and I just touch the geometry I want to get rid of. It highlights it all, and I hit delete. So now I have the shape that I would make in the shop, and I want to make it three quarters, so I'm going to double click. I'm already in it, so double click to get in it. Single click to get to the surface there. Hit the P key for push-pull, pull it out, 0.75 inches. And now I have a group that is one uh, piece that I'll be cutting in the shop, but I want to do four of these that are identical to start with. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to hit the M key for move. I am going to grab the point I want to reference to, and I'm going to just tap the option key, and that will so it so you can see the little plus symbol. If I tap it again, it turns it off. So I'm I'm not holding the option key. I am, and I believe on Windows that's the Alt key, but I'm on a Mac, so. That creates the copy rather than move. This is the move variety of the arrow, no plus sign. Copy variety of the arrow will leave the original version there and move a copy of it for you. I'm gonna grab it, do like that. And if I wanted to do 20, I could do that, no problem. But now what I wanna do is I wanna copy both of these to the other side. So I'm gonna take my selection tool, left click, shift, left click. And the shift will add to your selection if you have one selected and you don't hit the shift key and you select, it'll just change your selection. So shift, click. Now I want to reference from this edge to put it on the back edge. So I'm going to hit the M key, tap the option key, just grab this and drag it along that edge right there. It'll reference perfectly and snap in alignment. And then what I want to do is I just want to edit one of these. Now I could have made these components if I was doing stair pickets or something, I would make a component rather than a group. And then if I edit one, they would all edit identically. In this case, 
They're all separate, so all I need to do is go into this one group, double click into it, see the dotted lines, and I want to edit this surface. So I'm gonna highlight it with another click. It's a left click. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my tape measure. You can see here, I could have done these beforehand, but I can still do them now. Eighth of an inch. Oh, escape out of there. Eighth of an inch. And I could have typed that in, but it snapped right to where I wanted it. Now I'm gonna hit the rectangle tool. Just fill that in right there. And that has broken this end plane into two parts. And I wanna take this part away. This is a little dust gutter so that when we cut with this in the shop, the dust will slide into there rather than holding my piece of material away from the uh, fence. So I'm gonna push. And just all I have to do is just tap this outside edge. It actually gives you a little red square and boom, that's gone. And now I have hit the O key for orbit. And I want to, the last thing I want to do is create the um, cover where the blade will cut through. I'm not showing the cut through here. This will be cut through there, but that'll be done on the table saw. So I won't show that here. So I'm gonna first thing do is delete guides. Now I am going to, I know these are, I used um, three, three and a half pieces of three quarter plywood, three and a half by three and a half, and then one that was three and a half by um, four and a quarter. So what I wanna do is, let's see, I'm gonna take the tape measure tool. I am going to find center, pretty easy to do, right? Boom, snaps there. And I know I'm going three and a half, so I'm gonna go 1.75 inches, enter. And then I'm going to go 3.5 inches. And I know that I don't set it right on the base because I don't want the, uh, the guard here dragging on the table saw surface. So I'm gonna start this an eighth of an inch up. So I pull that up and type in one eighth inch. I think in the shop I might have done it as a 16th, but eighth is fine as well. And then from there I'm going to go up 3.5 inches. And so now I know where I'm going to mount it. This is the outside edges of the little hollow box I'm going to make. And I know it's going to be three quarter inch material, so I'll drag that over, type in 0.75 inches. And I will hit my rectangle tool again. I'm not in any of my geometry, so I'm drawing new geometry here. Not If I were inside of this, I'd be drawing this new geometry within this bridge or this part of the fence. I don't want to do that. This is a separate, uh, separate piece to the, to the uh, model here. So left click once, left click twice, double click, make group, go into that group, P key, push pull, come come out 3.5 inches. All right, and I want to make a copy of that. So I'm gonna highlight it with the space bar selection tool, M move, tap the option or alt, and copy. I'm just gonna drag this over there, snaps right to where I want it. Now I wanna copy it again, so I'm gonna hit the, tap the option key, and I'm gonna just drag it out to where I wanna put it out here somewhere. And you'll notice if I hover over a surface that when it's selected, it gives me these little uh, arrows and if I cross this and if I put my um, selection tool on it, my move tool on it, it will show me a compass so I can rotate it. I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So just click there, drag it, 90. It says zero because we're actually, it references to where we are actually in space. So I was at 90, so I went to zero. I could have typed that in as well. Uh, and now I'm going to just move this into place. Snaps right in. Actually, that doesn't go there. I could do it this way. Yeah, we'll do it that way. I did it the other way last time. So now I want to move and copy this. And I want to rotate it flat. It's the cap here. And there I'm at 180. And I want to drag this down and snap it right to there. And then this one needs to be three quarters of an inch longer. So I'm just going to go into that group, double click, click again, P for push pull, and there you have it. I will edit, delete guides, 
and I will file save to make sure the last version is saved. And now I could, the next thing I would do is I would create a copy of this and I would break it apart and lay the pieces out and dimension them and uh, print it out so that I could take it in the shop and make the cuts using the dimension tool. All you have to do is it'll, it'll go right to those edges and it'll give you those dimensions. Pull them out for you and you can and of course you'd want to lay these pieces out flat so that you could see exactly um, how to cut these in the shop so that is a whirlwind tour of how easy it is to get into sketchup if you just remember to make a group you will save yourself tons of frustration and i would recommend that you just get in and come up with a project you want to do and just think of it like you're in the shop and you're laying it out on a piece of plywood or your wood and you're making stuff and you're getting out your drills and your saws and your routers and just use the various tools to um, make uh, the cuts you want to make. The only thing different in the shop is you're, you're, you're picking up a piece of half inch plywood and making the cut. First thing you got to do here is make the piece of plywood, but it's pretty easy to do great thing to get started on and um, and hopefully this will help you uh, be productive you know in my uh, carpentry and construction career I have learned that planning is absolutely necessary for efficient execution so this is an excellent planning tool particularly that you can start with the free version and that may be all you ever need so if uh, if this video and this teaching on this is, is uh, liked or, or found interesting by a lot of people, if I get a lot of comments, I might move on to uh, another section, another section just kind of increasing uh, what, you know, some, some of the education here. A lot of great videos out there. The main thing I wanted to do today was to encourage uh, you carpenters and woodworkers out there to realize this is a fantastic tool at your disposal. It'll save you a lot of time a lot of frustration, and a lot of wasted wood in the shop. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.